Cast 35 woohoo guys woohoo okay you know i am mike cast the host of the Hascast, and i'm here to bring you a weekly little kind of discussion of what's going on in the entertainment world in the music in the movie industry and also just the world in general and we're gonna just you know have a nice discussion about how things are for me for you for the world and just get to know each other through this beautiful microphone and camera we have set up and really just kind of I want to preach to y'all and I want you guys to hopefully tell me guys what you think in the comments of anything I talk about the new movies these new songs that have been coming out this beautiful entertainment we're in the golden age of entertainment um and um I have some gum that I don't want to chew I'm just gonna throw it in my little glasses seltzer I know you guys are like that's disgusting what is this guy doing um but, you know, yeah, I throw a lot of gum in there. I don't feel like throwing it out. I am so lazy. This is disgusting. You guys should leave. This is disgusting. No. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I'm feeling good, honestly. How are you guys doing? Um, I hope you guys are doing good. It's We we all struggle. We all struggle. Um, you know, I'm trying to get another job. Um, I'm trying to, you know, save money and stuff. I'm trying to sell my old comic books. Um, you know, we all struggle, and I'm getting through it, and these things help me forget about things I'm struggling uh, on, and these things motivate me, these podcasts, you know, uh, uh, one of my favorite podcast hosts is Joe Rogan, and, uh, he has a great, he has a new episode out with Duncan Trussell, which is like, he, he always preaches something about, you know, how people are doing spiritually and emotionally in the world, and, uh, Duncan Trussell really knows, he's like spiritual slow, like, he always talks about, you know, meditation, being at peace, uh, you know, about about good things, about helpful things. It's a lot of self help oriented things, and I love that stuff. I love that stuff. Um, yeah, and I, I that's and the fact that he's on Joe Rogan is, is good because they have a really good dynamic with each other. Joe Rogan, uh, he gets into like you know meaningful things. Joe Rogan, but I feel like when he's talking to Duncan Trussell, he's not just gonna pander to whatever the guest wants. Like, he's friends enough with him and has had him on the show enough to actually, like, you know, be, have a healthy disagreement and be real with him. Because a lot of Joe Rogan's guests that everybody likes are, you know, the big guys. You know, the Elon Musk, the, the uh, you know, the Dr. Phil's and the, uh, you know, all these people that he's getting on because he wants views. And there's nothing wrong with that. Who doesn't want views and who doesn't want money? But he tries to pander to what they want to hear. But when he has his real friends on, he's real with them. He's he's not he's not he's not he's not he's real with them. He's not talking in a business way. Joe Rogan's talking in a real way. All right, let's get into the first film I want to talk about, and that is Spree. This film uh, is produced by Aubrey Drake Graham, um, and it's written um, by. Let me look this up, and it stars Joe Keery, and he um, is a you know he he he's a uh, actor, and he was in Stranger Things. He played Steve Harrington, which is um, Nancy's uh, boyfriend um in the show and um he this is written and directed by eugene cult like your rent i don't know but this guy's a russian guy i'm pretty sure or um yeah so it, it's a black comedy horror film and it's kind of like his it's this it's it's very well done and it's kind of mostly done shown through like you know social media posts and live streams and uh this is a weird premise um so it's about a a kid teenager who wants to go viral he wants to have a lot of viewers and he wants to be internet famous so what he does is he's uh in a rideshare driver which is basically like uber he um you know he has his uber thing going on out of his car and he kind of sets up cameras and what he does is he kind of traps each passenger and live streams him murdering them and doing violent acts to these people and like he notices that there's a uh, stand-up com com comedic person in the town that's very popular so he constantly tries to kind of hop on different waves and 
uh, gain his popularity by, you know, killing big famous people and trying to do all that. And it's this weird thing where this guy has this greed to be, you know, internet famous and he just wants to be this amazing internet personality. And he starts doing these horrible things just to gain attention. And it's just such a cool concept and such a modern concept. I feel like this movie was needed. You know, a lot of a lot of a lot of movies like to follow the same blueprint of how they're made and how the stories are structured and you know, uh, adventure guy goes from point A to point B and this happens and that happens. But this is like one of those like kind of it has depth with like how it's socially relevant nowadays. And I feel like I actually thought about how I view like should I take a break from social media? I mean, obviously, you know, if I were like, oh, I, if I were right now to tell you I hate social media and I should stop using social media, that would me being that that's me being a hypocrite. OK, because I use social media all the time to you know do business um promote my stuff and get all my stuff done i love social media it's a great thing for advertisement but there is i'm not gonna i'm not that desperate enough to fucking kill people for this and i feel like this is just showing the side of ourselves that um acts not like ourselves on social media um for uh, attention in a certain way this is not saying that all kids nowadays just would kill someone for attention this is saying that there is always that side of ourselves as people that would do something that we would not normally do for attention on social media this is what that is saying and there's not nothing there's not it's not necessarily like the worst thing in the world to be on social media it's just saying that spending time off of it and not taking it too seriously is a good thing but you know it's not like you it, it had it successfully makes you think about itself and that's what this movie does well it makes me think it's not something to put on just to pass the time it's something to watch and actually think about and enjoy so overall this was definitely we're gonna put on the watchability scale this is definitely worth my time this is a worthy investment of time that's what it gets on the watchability scale point it right there yeah so what did you think of the trailers for this i did a trailer for re reaction for this earlier it actually got a considerable amount of views it actually got like 116 views um so you know that's good for my channel um so what did you think of the spree film i thought it was excellent and it made me think it's a new movie that made me think about you know it's not some it's not just popcorn bullshit it's it's something good to think about it's almost like the american psycho for the digital age and you know me i love american psycho if you've seen me and drew dumptious talk about that me and drew dumptious the first has discusses podcast is about american psycho you know i just wanted to do a video on that movie because i love it so much i read the book ba that the movie's based on and i hardly do that because i'm always like oh there's no difference the book and the movie you know i don't i don't want to think about that but with american psycho i actually took some time to you know, I'll be back right now. I'll show you the proof. I have this book, yo. And I'm not and I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Yeah, see here it is. The American Psycho book. You know, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I listen to a majority of the book on Audible, like an audiobook thing, because I don't really want to read it. But I did like read a little bit of it in the beginning. But I loved it. I love the book. Um yeah, it's so crazy. How it shows, you know, uh it, it almost creates like a specific character role for the main character and how it creates like an archetype an archetype in american psycho is the the rich uh white businessman who will uh who steps on the lower class and in many ways in monetarily ways violent ways and you know spiritual ways and that shows the difference between them and what spree does is it shows you know the the youthful depressed child that our age is and how we mostly want to just get attention on social media and how we're kind of separated from the real world and eugene and eugene and eugene Coltella rocky and i don't know and gene McHugh who wrote this really did an excellent job and also the way it's mostly uh you know filmed through uh you know cameras and 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 like li live cameras on on the internet and um live cameras on youtube and cameras on social media mainly and many different streams and and uh phones and stuff that it's on it's really an excellent it's really an excellently well done movie and it made me think so i, I really messed with this let me guys you thought of uh you know the trailer for it or if you actually saw the movie it's available for rent it's distributed by rlge films uh, rlg films is a great film distribution company they distributed monster party and uh mandy 
Uh, Mandy is a great movie. Um, yeah, great movie. Definitely check out Spree. This is a joy to talk about. Um, and uh, let me talk about future plans for the channel. Um, I'm gonna be interviewing the SoCo Show host, uh, the, the the co-host, um, Cody Michael. Cody Michaels is, is just like, I, I've actually played a couple of video games with him on Jared Buckendall's stream. I actually got a chance to talk with him. He's a nice individual and he runs this amazing podcast called, you know, The SoCo Show. They mix, um, they, they talk all things games, movies, TV, entertainment, news. And they have these funny uh, things where they look at like funny tweets they see on the internet and stuff, like chic tweets. and It's, it's a unique show. Definitely check it out. Um, now we're going to talk about John was trying to contact aliens. Um, it's a documentary short film on Netflix and it got released. Netflix is really a one on a roll. I'm a, I love Netflix originals, but this is really stuck out to me. Um, John was trying to contact aliens is a short documentary about, um, this guy named John and he, see, he, um, you know, he grew up in like, you know, a very rural area in America and you know what, what he does is, um, he, he basically sets up this whole base in, uh, in where he lives and stuff and he, um, he has these like broadcasting equipment and how he broadcasts music into space through like radio frequencies and um, for over like 30 years this is his like mission in life and and what he does is he tries to you know contact aliens in the sky and shit and it really gave what, what this did is it gave him a purpose like he'd pick many different types of earth music because he said that's the best way humans communicate is through music so what he did is he broadcasted you know his favorite selection of music and he had this cool radio station thing going on and he wanted just to contact aliens and it really gave his life purpose but you know through insufficient funds you know it didn't work out in his entire life but then he ended up getting married and um you know john said that while he respected while he respects how his life is going now and how he's he's working in like you know communications and stuff and how he's happy with um who he's married to Oh, what it, what he said is that he respects that chapter of his life and how it gave him purpose to do something to 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 and it gave him like a celestial purpose in this universe to contact people that aren't on this planet and I felt that that was beautiful you know you don't have to do the same thing your entire life and when you respect a certain section of your life that you're not acting in and you're not doing now you know that's 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 respect that's respect for the whole time frame of everything that you ever ever have ever done. You know what I mean? And I just, I gotta respect that. And totally, like, definitely check this out. It's a cool little, it's a cool little short film. And, yeah, it, it's just something to think about. Only 15 minutes worth of your time. And it went to the Sundance Film Festival, you know. Whippity woo, you know, motherfucker. Sundance, you know. If you have a film at Sundance, then, you know, you made it. You you made it in the film industry somehow. I mean, you, you're gonna have to keep on going forward and make more films. But, you know... That's something I'd like to have on my belt. If I were a filmmaker, I am a filmmaker. I'm trying to make movies. You know, it's not going to happen now. You know, I'm still trying to figure this shit out. Guys, I'm trying to write. I'm going to get this done. And I'm going to take a week and a half break from, you know, f you know, podcasting and YouTube just so I can write and write and write. Because, you know, a lot of stuff happened to people. And when those things happen, I start to write. So, yes. Now we're going to go into a celebrity death. And I don't know if I want to talk about this. I just I just want to talk about this for a little bit, okay? Chadwick Boseman died, okay? I'm not gonna put this in the title. I'm not gonna advertise this video as that. I will not advertise a video about this, okay? While this video is just while this is a small section of the podcast, I don't want to make it the entire thing of what my podcast is about, because that means I would be like just. Comp I don't know if this is right or not. I don't know if I should be talking about someone who's dead. But all I can tell you, listeners and watchers, is don't is celebrate what he left for us. Celebrate the great films that he left for us. 42, Black Panther, you know, all these great movies that he has been a part of. The um you know, the James Brown biopic. Celebrate what he left for us in the Five Bloods. Don't be sad for where he went. That's all I have to say about Chadwick Boseman. Celebrate what he left for us. Don't be sad for where he went. Because he left a great filmography. And I, you know, I don't mean to say this just to say it, but I was thinking about 42 
and it was actually the day that it was um Jackie Brown or or Jackie Robinson, you know, Jackie Robinson, the baseball player. They had the little memorial thing in the baseball game and how everybody wears 42. I was thinking about that movie and how maybe I should rewatch it. And then, you know, I figured this news out. And I just want to say, celebrate what he left for us and don't be sad for where he went. That should go for any death. You know, don't be sad for where he went. Celebrate what that person left for us. Okay. And you don't have to be a famous person to celebrate what people leave for us. They leave for us. People that die leave for us meals. They leave for us uh, emotional experiences. You know what I mean? Uh, So, yeah. That's what I got to say about, uh, you know, Chadwick Boseman. Rip the goon. Rip a great Avenger. And rest in peace the taste of that seltzer. Because that shit tastes so weird because I put my gum in that. This rotting piece of gum that has stayed there for a week and stuck to the bottom of this in an added new piece which really doesn't help anything but this really clears my throat so (sighs) mood by 24k golden featuring ian dior is a new track it's a summer fun track with a guitar melody very similar to 24k golden's previous song which was did very high on the billboard charts city of angels um it actually topped number one on the Billboard U.S. Rock charts. This song is kind of um, it's a it's a it's a fun summer track, and it's really a summer anthem. And Twenty Four Year Old Golden stows his fun but kind of dark emotional side along with Ian Dior. Um, you know, talking about ah, why you always in the mood and something, something. You know, he's talking about how like you know, he's not liking the emotional discomfort of this woman that he is with, and how. They play a lot of games because of both of theirs depression towards how everything is gone um, with their lives. And I, I don't have too much to say, with it, but this song is popular. It's rising on the charts. Um, it peaked uh, it, it peaked very high. Let's look this up. But, I, you know, the Ian Dior guy, um, he's all right. He's all right. Um, I feel like I'd have to go into him. I know he has a big, you know, fan base. Um... But yeah, he, he was, he's like a Puerto Rican guy, I believe so, but um, yeah, so this hit number one on the emerging artist chart, and uh, let's see, let's see where it hit, um, I feel like, I don't know, I'm sorry, I should know this shit before fucking doing it, um, you know, recording and all this, um, but anyways, you know, Tony Ferguson Golden, he's like a San Francisco type of guy, and um, I really mess with his music. I've been a ba- fan since like before um, he hit XXL and before he blew up and stuff. Like I've been a real fan. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. Twenty six on the Billboard charts. That's where it peaked. But this week it's actually at number four on the Billboard charts. So he's getting really high. I don't know if he hit number one. I don't know if he's fully blown up yet. But it's on. He's on the level of you know Jack Harlow and all the new class. I love the new class. XXL was such a great class this year. I, I might I might have done a video of it. I might not have. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I mess with it. Um, I like seeing I like seeing this, but I feel like uh, his next song shouldn't be similar to this. I want him to see him go into his other territory. Like, like he did, like, a Tropic-based song, sim- reminiscent, the beat reminiscent of uh, ZZ. And actually, he's the same producer, um, DA. Um, he did, I don't know his real name. All I know is uh, his producer tag is DA Got That Dope. So um, I want to say a Tropic song, like the Gram he did with Fetty Wap, which is a solid feature on that. On his EP dropped out of college, which is a beautiful EP. Um, it was a great project. It had, it it was it was excellent, you know. And Valentino, you know, while it's his biggest song, there's so many great songs on it. There's no skips on the Hell album. Been here before, such a great song too. Um, but we will see what he goes into and what his territory he goes into. Um, voice crack. Come on, Mike. Uh, on his next project, El Dorado, which releases I don't know when. I really don't know. So. Let's get into an EP and review this EP. Rights and Wrongs, an EP by Zaire. Uh, in the song Mourning About the Death of a Friend, um, Zaire, it's called So Cold, the song. Zaire raps, you keep my name in your mouth. It must be so tasty. This song keeps with the techno-positive synth and soothing beats created and rapped over by Zaire. Zaire is, is a Delaware rapper and producer who uh, actually went to my high school, but now he's graduated and, and going to college. Um, 
and he released the EP Rights and Wrongs, you know, the other week, and um, they all had great songs, no skips, uh, pretty minimalistic beats and subject matter. It was kind of cool and interesting. He Zaire mainly raps about, you know, uh, how he wants fame and happiness compared to people, you know, talking shit and adding neg- negative energy on his life, and, you know, that's that's good energy, you know, when I'm listening to that song, uh, these songs, you know, they're, they're mainly about how he wants a better thing for himself, and how he's kind of brushing aside these people that talk so negatively about him. He has the subject matter of money bag yo, but the boyish sound of a Lil Uzi or or, or, a, or a Lil Yachty. But he has kind of the, the subject matter of kind of all three, but he, um, he could be, his beat selection could be compared to Uzi and uh, Pierre Bourne, and, which I know is one of his inspirations. He's told me that before. Um, a lot of, you know, cool distorted, you know, bass and stuff. Uh, which I love, um, but you know, cool, fun, upbeat tracks, and I really missed it. Zaire kind of the CP was solid, um, yeah, and there's a lot of techno kind of vibes to him, and a lot of like a lot of Uzi inspiration. I can I can definitely see that. And rights and wrongs uh, was a solid EP. Um, you know, a lot of good songs were on this. Um, but I, I so cold w- was very good, um, for sure. Up next was a good song. Uh, you know, I already said so cold. Rockstar was a highlight of this for sure. Um, and yeah, definitely check it out. He's on uh, Apple Music, Spotify, all that. Just look up Zaire, Rights and Wrongs, Voice Crack again. My God damn it. No skips. All five songs get added to the playlist. Um, yeah, I liked it a lot. I liked it a lot. And I hope he blows up. Another EP to check out. Is, oh, also, let me just shout out WSC Tony again. I did an interview with him. Check that down on the channel. It's a Has Discuss This podcast that I did with him. This is Askast. Uh, you're tuning in. And also, just a reminder to review uh, this podcast or give a rating if you're listening on any podcast platform or like and comment on the video if you're on YouTube. What up, YouTube guys? Pointing at the camera. All right. So, yeah, shout out WC Tony. He had a song with Zaire called Play Me. And I remember in the interview, WC Tony was saying uh, he might even do a, an album or a mixtape with Zaire. So that, I, that, I'd be fascinated in that. Because I feel like their styles blend very well together. Zaire has that kind of a cool, kind of boyish sounding, like very, like, high, he's not super high pitched, but he kind of has this, like, kind of, like, positive voice to, he has this cool voice to him but uh wc tony sounds like an old head he sounds like you know sounds like blue face a mix of blue face freddie gibbs and money bag yo and like he sounds like wc tony sounds like an old head and zaire sounds like a young bull which is which doesn't make any sense to me because zaire is older than tone um like <laughs> i don't know i don't know but i focus with it um, I folks with a lot, and um, yeah, I really like to, I really like to see them do something else and do something something good together again. Cause I really messed with their collaborations, and I really rest with this EP. Another EP to check out if you want. It has some cool soul samples and a lot of boom bat, and um, he also kind of sounds like uh, you know an old Ed type of guy. He has this deep voice. It's Paul Butler's Time, great EP released about a month ago. Sorry I didn't review it. I really wanted to, but I was going through a tough time and. I wasn't doing a lot of videos like a month and a half ago anyways. Um, but, Paul, I'm shouting you out. Definitely, anybody else watching, check out Paul Butler's Time EP. I'm definitely going to shout that out. I was released about a month ago. Check these guys out for sure. You know, Zaire, WC Tony, Paul Butler. Um, they all got some good shit going for them. Uh, a lot. Um, definitely like to shout them out. Let's get into rap news. Enoli Chapa is woke. He did an interview with, um, uh, what's his name? Bootleg Kev. Yeah, Bootleg Kev also did a, uh, really good, um, Freddie Gibbs interview. Um, yeah, he, what I like about Alan Chava is he's, he's got a lot of cool stuff going for him. And the stuff he talks about off, not on his albums is, like, really interesting. And, um, he was talking about how he thinks Elon Musk is an alien, and I feel like he's getting in this cool conspiracy mode, and he's with his influence. I feel like that's good for the com- conspiracy theorist community and how they're pushing these alternative theories. 
to the world instead of letting the mainstream media suppress them. So Emily Chapman is talking about how cold showers on Twitter. He's talking about how cold showers increase tolerance in people and how meditation is help and causes peace for people. He's talking about the lack of food going on in the world and the floods in China. I'm serious. Um, I got this from Soluminati. So if you go to Google Translate, type in the word flood, translate it to, to China, you put it into Twitter, you get transferred to Twitter's um, China um, you know, mainframe and shit, and you'll end up seeing the videos of China's floods and how the, and, and all this crazy shit going on and how these people are starving and like eating each other and stuff. And China is really, I mean, I love the country. I feel like it has a lot of great cities and a lot of good culture and a lot of great food. But I feel like there's a lot of stuff going on that is not being covered. And the fact that Emily Chapa is supporting Soluminati with this and um, pushing this this positive agenda towards showing the, what is really going on in the world makes me have faith in you know him, his, him and his career. And you know what he even said is that his music is all BS and that it's all just made to distract people. He's even admitted that. That it's being pushed by his labels and how he's trying to rap about all this negative stuff and how he's basically, he, Enelie Chapa is, you know, his music is made to distract people from what's really going on behind the scenes. And the fact that Enelie Chapa is talking about this, just, I hope nothing happens to him because he's starting to speak the truth and he's starting to influence the right and the wrong people. People that aren't going to be through him as he's trying to push this positive agenda for the world, get out of here, okay? We want that positivity. We want people, that, you know, uh, to, to speak the truth. Tory Lane said he was going to uh, expose the uh, satanic um, industry and how there's some horrible shit going on behind the scenes. You know what happens? He gets the keys of shooting Meg the Stallion and he gets deported and his career is basically over after he even threatened to expose the satanic industry and music industry they're in. I, you know, it, it, there's so much sketchy shit going on in the world. And I gotta tell you guys this. This I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna tell. I'm not. I, 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 you know. I'm not gonna tell you uh, the new album, the new XXL, and make fun of this guy's XXL freestyle. When it comes to rap news, I want to talk about what these people's personal life is like and how they're influencing a positive message on the youth. And that's what Emily Chapa is doing. There's music is very negative. It does sound cool, and the beat selection is good. Um, but I feel like uh, you know the depression songs and all the emotional stuff, and Emily Chapa singing is very good. Uh, and I, I really mess with it. Um, you know, we're gonna be doing a nostalgia case. Roll it. All right, Boondock Saints. This kind of came out in an era where a lot of good indie movies are being made, being the late '90s, and um, this kind of has that cool. A lot of dialogue, that 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 violence, that ultra violence, and that cool kind of modern dialogue, and how it's mainly focused on the characters and dialogue instead of the big scale blockbuster things. It's about two um, brothers, um, Irish brothers, in Boston, and they kind of become vigilantes and do these cool like you know, religious chants before they kill uh, people that are doing bad things and start to kill these horrible, you know, criminals and drug dealers around Boston. And they're the boondock saints. They are the saints for the city. They are helping horrible, you know, Russian mob guys and Italian mob guys out. And uh, I don't know the actors' names, but I'm pretty sure some of them are on Walking Dead. And, uh, you know, the they get arrested for um, killing, you know, a bad guy and stuff in this and uh you know they admit to it they're like um it was self-defense and stuff so then the police let them go and they start to form this relationship with the um police boss willem dafoe and uh you know the willem dafoe character it was so interesting it, it was so much fun it was a lot of fun and um it, it, it was like you know there's a lot of cool like you know the way the scenes are kind of structured and how they're telling the story of how like so what happens is this happens like five times in the movie Willem Dafoe's character arrives at a crime scene, and he tries to describe what happens, and then we see what actually happens, and it's so mind-blowing about how these crime scenes happen, and how these guys do these cool action shit, and they're even making fun of it, they're like, you see this on bad TV, the guys go out of the vents and w with ropes, and then shoot people hanging from the ropes, and shoot the bad guys hanging out the ropes, he's like, you see this on bad TV, like, it's so, like, cool, creative, 
and I really messed with it. And um, yeah, dude, uh, the Boondock Saints was so cool. My camera battery is gonna die in like 30 seconds, so uh, I'll be back in a minute. Oopsie daisy, guys. <laughs> Testing. Mic check. All right. Yeah. So overall, Boondock Saints worth your time. Um, I'm pretty sure it's on Amazon Prime, which is where I watched it. I watched that like cool sleepover thing with the bros. It's definitely a movie for the boys and the girls at the sleepovers. If you want to watch something fun, cool, action packed, but you really care about the characters a lot. Um, you know, the character, the Italian mob character, helps them out towards the end of the film. Um, you know, I'll find his name right now but he he was he was a yeah, you were very emotionally attached to him and he he was a he was a cool guy he was funny like yeah um yeah i'll find him right now yeah here he is um yeah rocco yeah rocco and he's a henchman of the akaveta clan until uh you know papa joe sets him up to be killed and then the, you know the mcmanus brothers which are the two windock saints you know what they do is they 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 become very like you know helpful. They 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 become very helpful to this guy. He's kind of the next mobster, and it kind of helps him out. And they become very good people together and attack. You know, all this stuff. There's such a good character dynamic and the dialogues. So there's so much chemistry between the actors. You know, uh, Detective Greenlee and um, FBI agent uh, as Paul Smecker. You know, the Willem Dafoe character. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun going on. And, you know, um, Connor's, uh, you know, frequent references to, you know, John Wayne, Clint Eastwood, and Charles Bronson are hilarious. Um, and I just watched a John Wayne movie, Hondo, which was pretty good. Seemed a bit cliche, but I mean, it came out around the times Westerns were at its height, 1953. So, yeah, it was cool. So, um, yeah. Um, this is a, in the director story behind this is kind of a rags to riches story. Miramax Films won a bidding war to buy the Boondock Saints scripts, and uh, he offered four hundred fifty thousand dollars to the director um, to write and direct it, and uh, you made a lot of money. And then you know when it came out, it didn't make a lot of money, but he made like a deal with um, Boon, um, Blockbuster Studios to like cool do a cool um, you know distribution deal in like 2006 so that made a lot of movie and uh, word of mouth really put this movie on the map so uh in terms of a filmmaking standpoint this could be learned from so yeah um oh man this movie's such a i've rewatched this about five times and it's from you know 1999 definitely worth the time if you like those like kind of uh if you like the matrix if you like blade if you like the dark knight you will love this this is a cool original superhero vigilante cool fun thing they're not wearing no masks they're just two guys and it's very cool it's not completely realistic but you know the cool rock and roll soundtrack and the, the punk and the cool like rock soundtrack is so much fun to watch and overall the boondock saints is like one of my favorite superhero movies and movies about heroes and vigilantes and you know one of those cool crime movies definitely check it out that's all i got for you guys today um in hascast 35 we made it to 35 thanks for people who have been listening and chilling and listening and chilling and listening and chilling i'll be casting out my thoughts to you on the next hascast